In this lecture, we're going to talk about applications of central limit theorem. Let's quickly review what uh, some of the criteria were. What's a sampling distribution? It's a probability distribution of a statistic such as sample mean x bar. And what's the central limit theorem? It's a conclusion of sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar from any population with the mean of mu and variance of sigma squared with random samples of size n drawn from it. The sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normally distributed. The mean of the means will be the mean of the original population. The variance of the means will be variance of the original population divided by the sample size n. And a standard deviation of the means will be standard deviation of the original population divided by square root of the sample size n. Now these are the conclusions of central limit theorem for sampling distribution of x bar. Let's use sampling distribution of x bar with a sample size 16 drawn from a normally distributed population with a mean of 375 and a variance of 100. We want to find the mean of the means. We want to find the variance of the means. And also, we want to find the standard deviation of the means. Using the central limit theorem conclusion, the mean of the means is the same as the mean of the original population, so in this case would be 375. The variance of the means will be the variance of the population divided by the sample size. The variance of the population was 100 and our sample size was 16. So our answer is 6.25. Now for the standard deviation of the means, we can simply take square root of the variance of the means, and the answer is 2.5. Here, in this example, we have a sampling distribution of x bar with sample size 10 from a normally distributed population with a mean of 82 and a standard deviation of 7.5. We want to find the mean of the means and we want to find the standard deviation of the means. Again, using the central limit theorem conclusion, the mean of the means will be the mean of the original population, which was 82. And a standard deviation of the means will be standard deviation of the original population, 7.5, divided by the square root of n which n in this case was sample size 10. So the answer is approximately 2.372. Now let's take a look at the z-score and a sampling distribution of x-bar. 
we know from the normal probability distribution that z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. If we replace the x with x bar, mu with the mu of x bar, and sigma with sigma of x bar, we get this. But now we can use the conclusion of central limit theorem and the z-score for the sampling distribution x bar will be x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. In this example, we have a sampling distribution of x bar with sample size 16 from normally distributed population that has a mean of 6,250 and a standard deviation of 275. We want to find the z-score for x bar of 6,450. We want to find the z-score for x bar equal to 6,200. Using the formula that we just discussed, plug in the numbers, do the calculation, the z-score for the first one, 6,450, is 4.364. Do a similar work for the second question, and the z-score for that is negative 1.091. We always keep the z-score rounded to three decimal places when needed. The average life of a certain blender is 5.1 years with a standard deviation of 1.2 years. Assume the lives of these blenders are normally distributed. We want to find the probability that the mean life of a sample of nine such blenders falls between 4.5 and 5.5 years. Also, we want to find a sample mean that separates the top 10% from the rest from random samples of size 9. So we have a normally distributed population with the mean of 5.1 and a standard deviation of 1.2. However, we're taking random sample of size 9. So we can use the central limit theorem to compute the mean of the means, which is the mean of the original, 5.1. But the standard deviation of the means will be a standard deviation of the original divided by square root of n. We plug in the numbers and the answer is 0.4. Now we want the mean to be between 4.5 and 5.5. We're going to draw our normal curve, but we make sure that we label it with the mean of the means and a standard deviation of the means, the values that we just computed. To find the shaded area, I'm going to use the normal CDF command and we get 0.7745, which of course I could have rounded this to three decimals. Now we want to separate the top 10% from the rest for sample size 9. So top 10%, then the bottom area will be 90%. So our x bar is the same as P90, 
using inverse norm using the left area for the inverse norm with the mean and standard deviation that we computed earlier we get 5.6 Now suppose the hourly wages of all workers at a company has a normal distribution with the mean of $15.50 and a standard deviation of $2.75. We're going to select a sample of 10 workers. We want to know the probability that their mean hourly wages is less than 14.25 more than 16.50 below 14.50 or above 16.25 so again we have a normal probability distribution with the mean of 15.50 and a standard deviation of 2.75 and a sample size 10 so we're going to use the central limit theorem to compute the mean of the means and standard deviation of the means. Now we want to be the mean to be below 14.25. So x bar has to be less than 14.25. We're looking for the shaded area, which is on the left side. So we're going to use normal CDF, negative E99 for the lower, 14.25 for the higher, mean and standard deviation, and the answer is 0.0754, which again, I could have rounded it to three decimals. That would have been 0.075. Now I want to be above 1650. That means we want X bar to be more than 1650. So we're looking for that shaded area. Using normal CDF again. And the answer is 0.125. Now we want the mean to be below 1450 or above 1625. For this, we're going to find the area in between the two numbers and subtract it from total area 1. Instead of calculating each side and adding them together, it is more practical to find the area between the two numbers and then subtract that area from total probability 1. So the final answer for this one is 0 0.320, which is 32%. I hope this presentation helped you understand how to apply central limit theorem for means in real applications.